Hello dear ones, it's Alice. I am of the stars. And um, I wanted to talk about a couple of clearing events that have taken place yesterday and today. They both have to do with groups and clearing of groups. And interestingly enough, they both have to do with the energy of the lower triangle and, and clearing of that. It's hard to say what caused it, but the, the last two days have been tremendous in terms of clearing the energy of groups and glommed groups, number of groups, groups glommed together. So let me try to explain first. Um, there was a situation that I've mentioned in a prior um, video that had to do with a name of a person, a made-up name of a person that came to represent um, the Divine Masculine clearing on Earth. You remember I talked about that the other day. And But this name was imbued with quite a bit of um, astral negative energy from the lower the lower hell world and 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 I'm sure that facilitated the clearing that was happening but but the problem was that that the name seemed to be pretty much everywhere I ever went geographically it had gone just about everywhere and it and as I say it represented negative astral energy and um, that was clearing so so what happened uh, yesterday had to do with this name and and why it was there and how it was clearing which is a very interesting uh, instruction from the divine yes uh, as it turns out there was a shamanistic influence and uh, as I've said before it's never a good idea to blame other humans for what's happening on earth in terms of um, it's never a cause and effect from human to human rather Rather, it's, it's what's in the air that, that makes that change. We have a feeling, and the, the astral entities in the air, right? The astral entities carry that uh, feeling from being to being, and it snowballs, if it's negative, into a very negative feeling and logs on to the person we were thinking about. And so then there's a response from that person, a thought, a feeling, a thought form imbued with feeling. And the same thing happens again with the astral entities, negative. They ratchet up all of the thought forms uh, in the air, glom to this idea, and when it finally arrives back at me, who was the original sender, things have gotten very incendiary, you see. <laughs> so, so, so the thing to do is clear the air, right, and to clear the ent entities from our field. And so, oh, that, that's by way of explanation about what happened yesterday. And um, so, there was a realization by uh, me and other people that there was um, a person who had existed as a very um, strong, energetic, uh, third chakra, navel point willpower, um, shaman. Not too long ago he passed on and he had many loyal followers and he was very gifted in many ways in seeing the constructs, the thought forms of the astral plane and portraying them and no doubt he had a, quite a, a role to play in terms of fulfilling people's um, requests for, for, for many things in the, in the country that he lived in and he, he was in fact probably known in many countries. So but anyway uh, I could see uh, I could see a, a change sometimes in a shaman such as he as time goes on as they're in there at the flower of their manhood they're able to attract um, powerful astral entities that will do their bidding they can enslave them right and there are uh, no doubt time honor techniques for doing this but the problem is as they as the human begins to age uh, he he loses some of the vital um, elan that he once had. Some of the manhood simmers down, you know, and becomes more conservative. And the more that happens, the more the willpower um, begins to fade in 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 old age. The more the entity that he is that the uh, that the shaman has attracted can gain control over him. 
So apparently in this instance, that's what happened. And uh, uh, when, when he returned to the astral plane after passing on, when the human did, then some people today, during the ascension process, summoned him. Several people summoned him to work for them but in fact, what they got was the the um, the power of the astral negative entity that had attached to him, and was confining him in the astral realm, hell worlds. So, so when he was called, this powerful shaman was called. What action occurred in the newosphere and the magnetosphere of Earth, especially the newosphere, had to do with ratcheting up of the. Uh, the divine masculine in its negative aspect. Okay, so so those of us that realize that bade him leave uh, today, bade him bade him leave these people alone, and he went off. Oh, yesterday, sorry, he went off, and it and the um, the audio audio effects were incredible on the astral plane. It was like if I were to envision it, I would imagine this this great huge children's balloon being blown up really big right and then you know how if you don't tie it up and you let the balloon go it goes fizzing off everywhere losing losing air until it's it it has no more air in it and then it sinks to the ground and that's what it sounded like happened to this person i was concerned actually very concerned and it, it he his he sounded just so uh, sad and weak and pitiful, more and more so, crying out for help, you know. And, and so uh, I thought about it quickly, you know. And first I, I tried a, a time-honored technique. I said, first I said, I assigned this person to, to the seventh level of hell now so that he can learn the soul lessons that will allow him to, to ascend to, to heart consciousness, right? And so, because he had been using power, you know, for, for personal purposes, for personal, other people's personal purposes. So, so he was going fizzing, you know, with the balloon thing, and that, that got me concerned. So I said, oh yeah, assign a room in the Ritz-Carlton uh, Hilton in the seventh level of, of, of astral negative for him, okay? And, he, and then I heard, oh, thank you very much, you know, and he settled in. And so then I had a breather. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so I said, um, so I thought of the person that he might have really admire since he was a shaman. I thought of Dwalkul. Dwalkul is kind of a representative of many different modalities of um, spirituality. Christianity, I heard he was a, was it a Tibetan Lama, the head of a monastery there too, and also uh I think he had a shamanic instinct as well. So I thought, here's a perfect person, you know. He can combine all of these and teach him quite a lot. So I said, Dualko, my prayer was, Dualko, please go down to the seventh level of hell negative and, and oversee the teaching of this person, if you would, you know. And the response was um, a very mature and very uh, firm, masculine voice saying, yes, he would. And plus a lot of other people chiming in. It was quite a show. <laughs> and so and so that worked out okay, you know, I think. Uh, that And immediately the, uh, the um, new sphere of Earth changed immensely, absolutely immensely. It was like a great weight had been lifted off, off of Earth. And uh, so I recommend uh, looking, always looking to ourselves to make sure there are no astral negative entities around us and to give them, and to give them a wide berth. You know, may the air fall asleep and like that, that kind of chant. So that's the first thing that happened. And it, it followed upon an experience I had many years ago that was rather similar to it and that corroborates and strengthens this story. Uh, then today, something happened with another leader of a big group of people worldwide. And that person, and these are indications of what's going to be happening in the, in the near future, I think, with groups all over. Uh, this person had in mind and was like creating uh, astral stories with 
all of his group, large, huge group participating, and, and almost all men participating in this group with a, with a focus on a particular woman or maybe a succession of women that the masculine energy of his group completely overwhelmed. And so it was an unpleasant experience for the, for the women who were like featured in the astral plays and the astral stories. And uh, I don't know the reason for that why that happened, why that type of play happened, maybe to do with the, um, the balance of energy in the group. Um, so, but today, just now in fact, he decided to release one of the unwilling protagonists of these overbearingly masculine plays, which seem fine to men, you know, because they're very into the thing that they're doing and they're paying attention to how much they love to do it together, you know. And so they're not thinking about the lone female protagonist. They're not thinking about, oh, she, what are her feelings? They're thinking about, she's got to love it because I love it like that, right? It's, it's very interesting, that point of view. Um, and so, but today he, um, he got this notion in his mind, which is very healing, about the woman as being not physically attractive to him. And immediately it fractalized out to his entire group. Now, um, if he can repeat that with all of the women that this has been happening with for his group, then that will free those women to pursue their own co-creative uh, uh, faculties. And so, so that's, that's really a freeing up of energies. It's a, it's a kind of a release of the causal skein, you know. Uh, and so I'm looking forward. I think these are both excellent omens for the future. And I'm looking forward to find out what's going to free up tomorrow. You all take care. I love you lots. Take care. Bye-bye.